So what I'm suggesting is uh, that uh, the basis of human rights law uh, is uh, a kind of natural uh, mor morality, and this was reflected uh, in a long tradition of Christian thinking on the subject, uh, which many, many of us will be familiar with from our times when we did some basic history at school. Um, in the pre-modern period, it took effect in such declarations as that of the Magna Carta in 1215, which guaranteed barons and by extension all freemen certain legal rights, notably the right to appeal against unjust imprisonment. Nevertheless, the language of rights and its modern emphasis only came, really came to the fore in the, in the 17th century, as I've suggested. But what I think is very important to note about that enlightened movement uh, is that so many of the people who formulated the idea of human rights at those times did so in the conviction that they were doing it under God and before God. I mean, the American Declaration of Independence in 1776 stated, all men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable uh, rights. Endowed by their a creator. Now it is true uh, that some of those who drew up the American Declaration of, of Independence and certainly uh, those uh, who stated the same truths in France would have described themselves as deists rather than Christians. That is they believed in one supreme creator God but this creator God as it were set the the ball rolling, got the world going, and then left it at that. They did not believe in a specifically Christian uh, revelation. Nevertheless, the fact of the matter is uh, that they had some kind of belief, uh, and they thought that human rights uh, were given us by a creator, uh, and we were ultimately accountable to a creator for the way uh, that we use them. For instance, the French Declaration was made, quotes, in the presence and under the auspices of the supreme uh, being. Now, what I want to suggest then is that the whole idea of, of human rights, which is so much to the fore in the modern world, uh, is implicit and was developing within the Christian tradition, that even at the time of the 17th century, people saw this in primarily uh, religious uh, terms. Now, there's no doubt about it, though, uh, that many people find it difficult to think that there's a very integral connection between human rights and Christian uh, belief. Some people would like to suggest, for example, that Christianity is primarily concerned with our responsibilities to one another, uh, not uh, human rights. Now, it is certainly true uh, that Christianity does emphasize the fact uh, that we have uh, responsibilities, and sometimes it is possible for there to be responsibilities without necessarily corresponding rights. I mean, many people here, for example, might believe that they have responsibility to treat animals decently, but they would be very unsure about whether animals actually have rights. So the two can be separated, but for most workaday purposes, usually responsibilities and rights go together. <clears throat> 